we are also talking about us, our humans. You know how we get so attached to our work that we start to identify with the work that we do. It becomes us. And then what happens when we lose that work through redundancy, retirement, a global pandemic? What happens to our mental health in that situation? Psychologist Dr. Rachel Hannum from North Brisbane Psychologist is able to shed some light on this topic. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Ashwin. How are you? I'm good, thanks, this evening. What is this danger of defining yourself by your career? Well, if you get so identified uh, and enmeshed in your own career uh, and your work that it becomes almost all of who you are, you lose sight of who you are outside of your career and you're not getting meaning and purpose from very much else. Um, And if you don't have good boundaries uh, between yourself and your career, then um, at some point you can find yourself being very frightened of retirement, for example. I've worked with those sort of people. Um, Or, yeah, just having a sense of who am I if I am not defined by the job that I do. Why do you think people end up in that state? I mean, this is a topic really close to my heart because as I was doing some pre-reading and seeing the questions you emailed me earlier, I was thinking, wow, I struggle with this as well. I think a lot of professional people do and people who have a calling or some sort of passion. Um, So I think it's because if we've invested in learning a skill or developing a body of knowledge, there's a lot of sunk costs. We've put a lot of time and investment into it. So, you know, we have a bias towards wanting to keep investing in something we've already invested in a lot. But I think it goes to some pretty primal needs around tribal um, belonging and community because there's safety in that. But we also get that sense of self and identity um, from having um, colleagues around us who understand what we do. You know, they empathize. A lot of very core needs that are met by work. So when you say tribal, is this about wanting to feel competent in front of others or wanting to have a certain status and we think our work gives us that status? I think so. Yeah, it goes to the heart of of significance. That status helps us feel like we matter, like we've got something to contribute and and like we belong somewhere. And all of that is is fairly hardwired into us and it's across every culture. So what was your experience of this was it with psychology? Can you tell us a bit more about what happened yeah. to you and what you did about it? Well, I'm still doing it. You know, I my practice as a prison psychologist has grown um, a lot since the start of COVID. We had eight practitioners and soon we'll have about 33 or so. Um, so I've had to become very kind of enmeshed. I used that word before. And it's hard for me to find good boundaries sometimes within my own life. I was reading an article your producer sent me asking questions like, how much do you think about work outside the office? How do you describe yourself when you meet someone new? Um, where do you spend most of your time? Has anyone ever told you you work too much? How many hobbies do you have outside of the work that you do? How would you feel if you could no longer continue in your profession? And I was going bingo, bingo, bingo for myself mm. as a psychologist. Uh, and just contemplating, even today, reading that article about you know, how enmeshed uh, and identified I've become in my own career, and I know that I'm certainly not alone, and it brings up the, the challenge, or certainly the question of how can I have better boundaries um, and sort of not put all my eggs in this one professional basket and, and have parts of myself, other parts of myself develop. It sounds like a much saner approach, but I'm wondering in some cases, is defining yourself by your career necessary to provide enough passion for you to reach the top of that career? You know, does anyone excel at something, the top 1%, if they're not consumed by it and identify with it? Do you mean, um, I mean, when you ask that question, I think of obs- the personality trait of obsessionality. Yes. And I've worked with some entrepreneurs and CEOs and business, you know, folk who I would say are pretty high on obsessionality (laughs) and that seems to come with a good deal of success, that they are so driven um, and uh, strive for excellence and push themselves. Uh, And many of them can hit a wall at some point, often around midlife, where, you know, the, the pearl and the oyster, as you and I were talking about the other day, is not necessarily you know, everything they thought it was going to be. Um, And yet, you know, nothing's all good or all bad. That obsessionality, that drive got them a great deal of success. 
they just need to kind of go to the next stage of their maybe their personal and spiritual growth as a human. Do you think it also keeps us looking externally for success? If we define ourselves in terms of our job, we're relying on something outside of our minds and bodies to make us happy, and ultimately that can prove a little bit dangerous. Mm, It certainly can, particularly when we have a concept of ourselves. You know, like this article that your producer sent me, the author said there's a difference between saying I'm a singing teacher versus I teach singing lessons. You know, and I thought, well, I could say I help people to, you know, become more conscious and self-aware rather than I'm a psychologist. And it feels different when you define yourself by the purposeful things you do rather than this image of yourself as having a particular sort of stereotypical identity. Um, So I think that, yeah, we want to be careful not to get stuck in our heads about the idea of who we are, but, you know, into our lives with a sense of the purpose and meaning behind the things that we do. What's the treatment for people who are seeking to stop defining themselves by their career? Yeah, such a good question. Well, if they are a bit enmeshed with their job and their identity based on their profession, I think that uh, it's important to recognise that. It's always the first step. Recognise you're over-invested and enmeshed and you maybe need better boundaries and more balance. Um, And I would say always start with expanding things in your life. Sorry, Rachel, you've just gone a little bit quiet there. Is the phone close to you? Yes. Okay. I'm going to say that again. Yeah, just that last bit. Yeah. So um, if you're over-enmeshed, over-involved in your profession, uh, that's the first step. And then realise that you need maybe more balance and some better boundaries. And I think starting small, trying new things without putting pressure on yourself. Let yourself do something really poorly. Anything worth doing is worth doing really badly, I always say. Mm. Um, And maybe you'll meet some new people when you try different activities that are out of your comfort zone. Um, So expand your network because we tend to be in our bubbles, both on social media, online, but also in our lives. We tend to have our bubbles of people who reinforce our way of seeing the world. So uh, meeting new people, trying new things, even if it's just one new thing. And the other suggestion I always have for people is to meditate. Not that I'm great at it myself. I get kind of into a habit and then I lose it. But when you meditate and you sit with a question like, who am I? Who was I before I was born? You know, Who am I without my identity? And you start to experience yourself as much more than just your personality or your ego or your identity. This is why people don't like to meditate, of course, because it can be quite uncomfortable at first Yes. to not know who you are for sure. But that can be another way that people can bring some balance. That's interesting, meditation. Sometimes people think of it as a form of hypnotism, but on the flip side, it could be a form of dehypnotism because you've attached yourself to this work and all these transient things and it can sort of help you look beyond that clutter. Yeah, I really like that way of looking at it. I completely agree. You've been listening now to Dr. Rachel Hannum, Clinical Director of North Brisbane Psychologist. Rachel, thanks for your time this evening. Thanks so much, Ashwin.